silent but Surely it was through But since when it's impossible Ever stop you and Friday's disappointment And Sunday's empty tomb But since when it's impossible Ever stop you The sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise Make a dead man walk again Open the grave I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling Gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. And resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Let's go. 
sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. about the presence of the Lord in this place this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you and praise you and worship. Glory to your holy and mighty name, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Praise your holy and mighty name. Hallelujah. Another day the Lord has made. Another day that the Lord has given us. And the wonderful news is his mercies are new. They're fresh every morning. Yesterday's gone. Past is the past. Hallelujah. Today is a new day. And right now, before we go any further in this service, I would like for us to go to the Lord in, in a time of repentance. There's nothing better than just starting off the day stepping into that place of the mercies of God and just ask the Lord to wash away anything, any thoughts, anything that may be going on inside of you that's not pleasing to the Lord. Why don't we do that right now? Let's just spend just a moment. God, we love you. We love you and praise you. We need you more than anything in this world. I pray today for your great mercy. Lord, we come to you in repentance. We come to you, Lord God, asking that you forgive us of all of our sins. If there's anything in our heart, if there's anything we have said, if there's anything that we have done, if there's any thoughts that we have entertained that is not of you and not pleasing to you, I pray that you would cleanse us that you would wash us. We want to be fresh. We want to be new. I pray, Lord God, your great mercy to be upon us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Why don't we lift our hands right now and just, just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy that endureth forever. Hallelujah. Praise your holy and mighty name. Praise your holy and mighty name. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, there's healing in There's healing in that mercy. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb. Sound of trouble's rattling. I praise you. I thank you, Lord. 
said I shall live I shall live I shall live hallelujah come on we're overcomers amen dry bones rise up live in the name of Jesus the power of the spirit of the almighty God dry bones live forgives us of all of our sins and he heals us of all of our diseases come on if you can believe the Lord has forgiven you when you repented can you believe God's healing is here amen we're bringing the needs right now before you and let's just speak healing let's pray healing don't just pray it but believe it expect it in the name of Jesus Lord, you see every need, every situation, every problem, every mountain, every barrier. And in the name of Jesus, we command it to be removed. We speak with the authority and the power in the Holy Ghost that that sickness and that disease and those things that torment us would be removed 
from the children of the Most High God. And we will see the mighty hand of power and healing. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins and healing us of all of our diseases. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It's good to have Sister Wagner with us. She's going to be preaching tonight and again Wednesday night. Amen. And, and Tuesday night, we want all of the, the girls that middle school and, and up. We want you to be here on Tuesday night. Give me what time is it going to be? Seven? Middle and high school. Amen. In the hyphen class. But 7.30 Tuesday night. This is kind of something we kind of threw on her yesterday. And uh, now don't forget Monday night's prayer meeting. Amen. Come on out. Bring, bring your family. Bring your kids. Come to the house of the Lord. God is doing great and mighty things. And I see it. I see it in the hearts of people as their hunger and desire has increased. Amen. So don't forget Monday night prayer meeting. Amen. But Tuesday night at 730, she will be speaking. Amen. And to our girls. And you want them to be here. So bring them. Bring them. Bring them. I want to be there. It's going to be some important things that she's going to be covering Wednesday night, all the classes are going to be inside the sanctuary, and we want everybody, everybody here, everybody here, amen, to hear, amen, what the Lord is going to be speaking to us in the church, and we, we just appreciate her so much for being with us this weekend. I want to ask Sister Wagner, if you will, to come and, and greet us this morning, and, and uh, just tell us, she has books, she's an author. And uh, she'll tell you more about all of this. Praise the Lord, church. You may be seated. As they were singing that song, and oh, I love that song. It's not just dead bones that come to life again. The Lord gave me a word in 2018 that he was going to start awakening dormant seed in the lives of people. And I believe that God is at work already doing that work. And in this church, he speaks life. We speak life not just to the dead bones, but I speak life to the dormant seed that's in planted seeds of destiny, seeds of purpose that God has planted in each one of his people. Each one of us was made unique with his fingerprints and his image and his purpose on our lives. And I speak life to that seed that's planted in each one of you. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is here to take us from place to place, glory to glory. The slide says transformed, and I'm never going to be satisfied. There's always more in God. Hallelujah. I asked the media to put up a verse for us. Uh, we're going to look just at one little verse of Scripture, too. It's been on my heart for this morning. King David said and I, I don't know I didn't put connect the two things together until I was thinking about it this morning that I love this church because you don't get tired of me saying this I'm, I'm not saying this because I want to invite back I'm telling you I go to lots of places and this is a church that does things with excellence is unto the Lord I see that. It doesn't mean you're perfect. Nobody's perfect. No program's going to be perfect. There's human error and, and just stuff happens. But this is a church of excellence. And so I, I connected that as I was preparing to speak just a couple words to you this morning. Oh, Lord, our Lord, the psalmist said it. David said it. King David cried out, Oh Lord, our Lord. He's not just my Lord. He's not, he's our Lord. Together we celebrate. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. There's power in the name. There's resurrection life. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest still the enemy 
and the Avenger. This is a psalm of celebration. And David began by giving thanks and beautiful praise to our wonderful and excellent God. But then he took this random turn out of nowhere, out of the blue. He's singing praises to God. And then he starts talking about babies and Avengers. What's he telling us here? He's telling us that he can use the, the weakest, the person of the lowest place. You don't have to be a superhero to win against the enemy. You can have power with God. Hallelujah. If you'll have faith, if you'll just open up your mouth and praise, you can steal the avenger. You can close the mouth of the accuser. You can silence the adversary if you will pray. fast but if you start praising God there was a time but there's been times in my life I didn't have it in me to do intercessory prayer I didn't have it in me to do warfare prayer I could hardly eke out an I love you but if you will stand or kneel or sit and you will just say I love you Jesus I don't know how this is going to end up. I don't know how all the pieces are going to fall into place. But I love you. And I worship you. And I am going to stay with you. And he will just come. And he will just bring you to a place of peace. And he will keep you. And he will give you the victory. You can walk in victory. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a superhero. You don't have to have letters behind your name or in front of your name. God wants to bring you to a place where you can walk in victory. And all you got to do is believe and worship him with the sincere faith of a child. Hallelujah. Worship him. And I tell you what, I could go into a whole message, but I won't. Pastor's preaching this morning. But when you, the devil starts throwing stuff at you, if you will start worshiping the Lord, that thing can boomerang back and hit the enemy and you will come out victorious. He doesn't want to hang around when there's praise. You know, it's lovely to praise in our home. It's lovely to praise in the evangelist quarters. But there's something about the atmosphere. When the people of God get together, the enemies flee. They don't want to hang out where the presence of God is. So let's worship the Lord today. I'm looking forward to being with you on Wednesday and on Tuesday. Pastor already talked to you about it. But let's just enter his gates with thanksgiving. Let's enter his courts with praise. And we can be in an atmosphere where the things that the enemy has brought against us, that they can just leave. Exit. 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 Your worship causes the presence of the oppressor to exit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, God bless you today. Thank you for having me. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Amen. If you'll all stand. Amen. If you're a visitor here today, we're so glad you've come to the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. Amen. And let me be the first just to say we'd love to have you come back tonight. Amen. And enjoy the ministry of Sister Wagner. Praise God. We're going to have a good time tonight. Amen. want to remind everybody that the youth are uh, are doing a silent auction. So after church, you want to go uh, next door to the activity center and, uh, and help support our young people as they raise funds uh, in this silent auction. All right. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we love you today. God, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord all that you are, God. We ask you, Lord, to receive this offering, Lord. God, bless your church, God. Lord, bless your people, Lord. God, pour it out upon your people, Lord, that we may have, Lord. God, just to give, Lord, and to give, Lord, to your kingdom. Amen. In Jesus' name, bless the church. Bless your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring your offering. Amen. Say hello to somebody. Wave, smile. In Jesus' name.
The silent auction is not next door. It's right here in the foyer. So after church, be sure and visit the table and bid on something for our young people.
to me. Come on, let's sing that loud in the room. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the presence of the mighty, living, all powerful God, creator of all things. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Amen. Best thing we can do is just kick our flesh out of the way, put out every doubt, and just expect and believe and receive. Hallelujah. It is good to have Elder Brother Medina here. God has done a great work. Sister Medina brought him through. Amen. Brought him through. Prayers carried him another time. God bless you, Brother Medina. We're so thankful that the Lord has helped you through that. Amen. And here you are again in the house of God. Hallelujah. Why don't we just praise the Lord and will you rejoice with Sister Medina? Jesus. She went through some scary places thinking she was going to lose her husband. God brought him through right here beside her again in the house of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you'll turn me to Zechariah chapter 10, and I'll begin reading verse 1. Haven't we had some beautiful days? Amen. Just They've just been beautiful, just been wonderful and just clear skies and amen there's always got to be something though you know you just can't have it perfect got some pollen in the air so that'll mess you up mess you mess you around and that's what's been stirring a lot of us up amen with our silences and sore throats and hallelujah but thank God thank God for another day that he has made Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 10, reading verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. And I want to talk to you on the subject that I feel that the Lord has given me for this morning. I must say that uh, 
it was a little bit different than most of my messages and studying. It, the Lord gave me a message and then he kept working me with it for, and my wife just kept wondering what's going on with me, you know, staying up real, real late at night. And I just, just didn't quite have it like the Lord wanted it to be. And, and I just kept having to chew on it and meditate on it. And, but I, I really feel like the Lord is, is speaking to us, to this church, and, and has been all year. Amen. And I want to talk to you on this subject. Pray. Pray for rain. Pray for rain. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. I did a little research on the highest rainfalls in the shortest amount of time. And three of the highest volume rainfall events on record have been in the last four and a half years in the United States. This was the United States research. The last four and a half years, we've had the highest volume rainfall events on record. Can you guess where the heaviest rainfall was found? Port Arthur, Texas. That's pretty close. That's close to home. I spent three years living in Beaumont. I know because I went over to Port Arthur quite a bit with the job of my company I was working with. Port Arthur, Texas, August 2017. Anybody remember Harvey? Harvey. It brought the heaviest rainfall ever recorded in the United States history. A total of 60 inches, which equals five feet. Five feet of rain fell in a short period of time. That's a lot of water. A lot of water. The record highest volume rainfall events in the world was in the year of 1966 at a place called, and it's spelt F-O-C, Foc, Foc, which is on the French island territory of Reunion in the Indian Ocean. And it made the highest record of rainfall events in the world, and it was put in the Guinness Book of World Records, at 71.8 inches of rain, fell in 24 hours. That is close to six feet of rain in 24 hour period. That's a lot of rain. This is what you would call an extremely heavy torrential rain. Extremely heavy torrential rain. The prophecy of Zechariah Concerning the latter days. In Zechariah 10 and 1, I read it. He said, ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. The, the reason I brought out these other illustrations is because he's using a literal situation to identify a spiritual situation. In the scripture, the Hebrew definition for when you study out the showers of rain that he talks about, actually when you look at each of these situations in this scripture, you'll look up rain and there's one Hebrew word and the next word rain in the scripture is another Hebrew word because there's different meanings throughout that scripture. But that when he talks about the showers of rain, it speaks of a heavy, forceful, quick, swift, torrential rain. Something that is greater than the norm. It's not the norm rain that comes and it sets in, but it's something that is very powerful and it makes a change very quickly. So the prophet 
He says, pray for the Lord to send the rain in the time of the latter rain. And he will send a swift, powerful, forceful, torrential rain. This is not speaking of the literal. It is speaking of the spiritual. If I can say this morning what he is saying is this, that it is going to be a ramped up spiritual activity in the spirit. I'm going to to ramp things up. it's, it's, it's It's going to be not like the norm. It's going to ramp up activity. And it's going to do a quick work. And I asked the question this morning, are you willing to be a vessel that the Lord can use in the time of the latter rain? Are you willing to be the church? Are we willing to be the church? I've always told the Lord, I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I have said that from the very beginning of the Lord changing my life and transforming me and delivering me and fixing me and healing me. I've said it from the beginning. Hallelujah, Lord, I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I want to be on the inside of what you are doing. I want to be involved in it. I want to be activated by it. I want the power of the Spirit to move through me in whatever you are doing and however you are doing it. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a song that uh, come to my mind when I was thinking about this. Send it on down. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. How, are we still saying that? Come on. Hallelujah. Are we still saying, God, send it down. Send it down. Send it down. Send it down. Let that powerful, torrential, forceful rain come down on me. Fill me. Rain on me. Hallelujah. I've been saying Ever since the beginning of this year, I don't want to play church. Amen. I don't want to play church. I don't want to just go through the motions. I want more than just having good church. We've been having good church. We've been having good church. But I want more than just having good church. Hallelujah. I've got a vision. Hallelujah. Without a vision, the people perish. If you don't have a goal, you'll never achieve it. I said, if you don't have a goal, you'll never achieve it. I've got a goal. I've got a vision in sight. Hallelujah. I don't want to be like the Charlie Brown humor. How where Charlie Brown, they shoot an arrow, and wherever it hits, they go and draw a circle around it. And then say, I'm satisfied. Hit the bullseye. Friend, I want to have a vision where God lifts my spirit and shows me something beyond where I'm at. And then there we achieve it in the power and the help of the Almighty God. Come on, I'm not just wanting to have good church. I want a mighty, spiritual, activated, Holy Ghost-filled church. I say, God, light me up. I want to be like a volcano that just become active. Come on. Come on. I want to be a, a volcano in the city that's become active where everybody takes notice. Something's happened on the mountain. Something's happening on the mountain. Something's happening on the mountain. It become active. Something hot has rose to the surface. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If y'all just let me preach this morning, I'm trembling in the Holy Ghost. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you willing to be fired up? Are you willing to be red hot? Are you willing to be a vessel full of the fresh renewing power of the Holy Ghost? Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, let God put you to the active status. I have become activated. 
hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. There are 1,550 potentially active volcanoes around the world. 80 confirmed eruptions at some point during 2021. And that came from 75 different volcanoes. Some of them was erupting more than once. 32 of them were brand new eruptions. Listen to what I read from a National Geographic article. Dormant volcanoes can switch from the dormant status to the active status just in a few days. For years, they believed it would take hundreds of years for this to happen. But with all of the technology we now have, they said we have learned in just a few days the volcano that is called Dharma can become active. It says sleeping volcanoes can wake up faster than they thought. Ooh. For a volcano to wake up, the mush needs to be thoroughly heated by fresh, hot magma rising up from the deep earth. Ooh. And the latest study shows it happens much faster than they thought. And it repeats, not hundreds of years, but suddenly, within a few days. Oh, hallelujah. Well, friend, we get excited about the book of Acts. We preach about what they had in that day. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The church that was birthed. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all of the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit activated them gave them the utterance. There became a demonstration of that which had happened. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And just as you read of the word suddenly, 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 something activated. Suddenly, things began to change on this earth among people. Suddenly, the power of God began moving and that activity began to change. 3,000 received the holy. The next time 5,000 received and then it continued on and here we are a part of the church of the living God. Hallelujah. But there is another speedy spiritual activity coming. Hallelujah. And it is prophesied about a spiritual reign in the time of the latter reign. Referring to that latter day church that Brother Jeff was doing an awesome job preaching. Amen. About the book of Acts, the Holy Ghost, the outpouring. But somewhere down through there, it's like the water went underground. And years passed, and years passed, and years passed. And then in 1901, somebody started reading these scriptures and was having a prayer meeting and started believing and said, hey, will you lay your hands on me? And let's pray for me to receive the Holy Ghost, like it says right there. If you read the book of Acts, there's no ending in that book. Just, just look at it for yourself. There's no good old amen. 
It's just to be continued. It just drops you. It just, because it is still alive today. Hallelujah. 1901, it rises back up. And all of a sudden, they begin receiving the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit begin activating again. Jesus' name, revelation, begin coming back unto the people where the Trinity movement tried to deceive the people. And they've seen the revelation of Jesus' name and began preaching Jesus uh, and receiving the Holy Ghost and the Spirit and believing in miracles and signs and wonders and healings. And and they become activated. Uh, Hallelujah. And now, here we are. Here we are. And it's kind of like it, you know, reached a certain place and we always want to shout about 1901. We always want to reach back to that a time where they woke up and the power of the Holy Ghost and they began, amen, believing this message and, and preaching it and receiving the Holy Ghost. And then you hit a, a, another period with time where it, it seems like the church went to sleep. There's another speedy spiritual activity coming for the latter day. Hallelujah. I can't get away from the tongues and interpretation we had on a Wednesday night a while back. Hallelujah. The Lord was telling you, rise up one more time and shake hell. One more time. That's what he said. Shake hell one more time because he's coming after that. It's not going to be another go down years and years and years go by. No, friend, one more time. The church needs to awaken and shake hell with the activation and the power with your faith and your expectation and your believing and your wanting to be on the inside of what God is doing. Hallelujah. The deep calls to the deep. That's what the Bible said. The word of God said the deep calls to the deep. Those deep things of God call. The deep is calling to the deep. Are you ready for the Holy Ghost reign in the latter time? Are you really ready for the Holy Ghost reign? He said, pray for the rain. Pray for the rain. Yes, this year we have been praying. We've been praying for unity. That was a pray for unity. We've got to, we've got to be a part. If we're going to be on the inside, we've got to be the united people. It's got to be said they were in one accord and in the one place. We got to be the praying people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to be the repenting people. Come on, we're not playing church. If we're living in sin, you got to get rid of that stuff. Quit. Say, I want to be a part of what God's doing. I want to be the holy vessel in the temple of the Holy Ghost to use me right before that coming. Use me. Use me. Use me, clean me up, put me on fire in the Holy Ghost, activate me. Hallelujah. Pray for the rain in the time of the latter rain. There is something very powerful, it's rumbling. It is deep in my spirit. It is a stirring. It is a heating up like something fresh, hot, magma rising from the deep earth that lights up that volcano that lay dormant or that might have been sleeping. That old fire of Pentecost stirring deep inside of my soul. Something is about 
to erupt. Something is about to happen like that volcano that became active and began activity and eruption taking place. Pray for the rain. Pray for the rain. I like putting visuals before you because we believe 90% of what we see, 10% of what we hear. And friend, if somehow we can get something imprinted in our vision and in our mind and we can hear and we can relate to something we can see. Somehow help us to actually get activated in my spirit. Come on. I'm telling you, the world is tired of hearing preachers. They're ready to see the people that have the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to be numbered as another preacher. How shall they hear except there be a preacher? But how shall we preach except we be sent? I don't want to be another voice in this hour. I want to be sent by God. I want to be sent by God. I want to be sent by God. And Rabbi, oh, fire of Pentecost, stir up in us. Stir up in this church. Stir us up. Oh, fire of Pentecost. Pray for the rain. Pray for the spiritual Rain. Yes, we have received the Holy Ghost, but there's a prophetic promise of a torrential, forceful, powerful, swift, quick activity that is greater than the former. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual liveliness. And it's, it's illustrated as clouds that become bright with electrical activity. Zechariah 10 and 1, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, and the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers. And that word, when you go into the Hebrew, it's, talking about, it's, it's identifying a different, it's talking about the torrential, that swift, powerful. Hello, give me, amen, if y'all will just play that video for me. Let's, get, get, let's just kind of get a visual. I scanned and tried to find something, and this is kind of thing sped up in time. But brother, crank down on one of them cords on there. Just come on. And our ears begin. Watch it out. Pray. Give us more volume on that. Pray. Come on. Pray. Pray. Pray for rain. If y'all will play that video again. Pray. Bright thundering, lightning, lively, with extreme activity. Extreme activity. Pray. Pray for the rain in the latter rain. Pray the Lord will send. The bright, active clouds that will give a torrential, swift, powerful, powerful, flooding rain. Will you lift your hands with me right now? Will you just, come on, come on, let's not just be normal church. 
Don't, don't expect something normal. Let's just get out of that. Come on. We all have a certain expectation in a certain place and how it's done because it happened like this one other time. Come on, we got to expect things in a different manner, in a different way. We got to get out of our boxes. We got to get out of our traditions. We got to get out of how it was last year. We got to get into a place and pray. Pray for the rain of the latter rain. Rain, Lord. Rain on me, oh God. Send it. Let it rain. Hallelujah. The spiritual liveliness. Oh. Come on. I'll read it again. Zechariah 10 and 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord will make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. Supercharged Holy Ghost power. The gifts of the Spirit in all of its fullness activated. Activated. That you may know the height and the depth and the length and the width. And you will know and have knowledge of the love of God that passes your knowledge. Goes beyond what your mind's capable. That you shall be filled with the fullness of the almighty God. Something erupt in a greater, greater way than before. The fullness of God. Sister, you tapped into it when you came up here. You said the seed. Awake. When you said that, I said, oh. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Come on. Will you help your preacher? Come on. We got a goal. We're shooting for this thing. We're not just flying out here in the dark. We're not just, come on. Will you allow yourself to be used? Let's be activated. Come on. Come into this church with a different mindset. Come into here with a different way of praying, with a different way of looking at things, and a different way of thinking. Get out from behind all of that other stuff. Come rise back up with the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. God is awakening us. God is awakening us. Hallelujah. Some of you may be looking at us like, what are you talking about? Friend, if you don't think God is not coming quick, something is wrong. You have not received the teaching of the Word of God that I have received. When you see the president of the United States talking about we need a digital currency, friend, you better wake up because there are going to be people that are receiving the mark of the beast. And friend, you will not be able to buy nor sell. This government can turn you off by one button. That antichrist system is very swiftly moving into its targeted goal. Don't you think this COVID thing just showed up? It's affected the whole world. I'm telling you right now, there's something that's going to happen, and it's going to happen quick, and that is a church is going to get activated one more time, and it's going to shake hell. Oh, we're not going out of some limping bride. No, he said he's coming back for bride without spot and without wrinkle. No, friend, you are going to be activated and you're going to be full of zeal and youth. You'll man up as wings of eagles. You're going to be the bride that is full of beauty that God created and he's coming back for. Hallelujah. 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 He's going to get us out of here. I know everybody's got their different beliefs, but friend, I believe the word of God. I believe the only thing holding back the Antichrist is the church, the body of Christ that's got power when they pray. The people of the name of Jesus. 
have got to be taken out of the way. Hallelujah, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, I'm preaching what the Holy Ghost is saying. Allow the Holy Ghost to take you from dormant to active. Dormant to active. Pray for rain. It's time for the awakening of a sleeping giant. It's time for another. Suddenly, it came as a sound from heaven. The deep called to the deep. That a heart powerful, greater than any volcano there's ever been, can arise. Shake here one more time. One more time. Just as the Bible tells us when John the Baptist was preparing the way for the ministry of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the people were in expectation. was moving something was preparing the way something was stirring Luke 3 and 15 and as the people were in expectation and all the men must in their hearts of John whether he be of Christ or not John said unto them, I have baptized you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, that of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. And he shall baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire. Just as the people were stirred up, they were in expectancy, expecting something is coming. Something is coming our mouth should be opened wide. Uh, your soul, your spirit, with expectation of the promised end time revival. One more time. One more time. One more time. Expect and pray for the latter rain, the outpouring, the speedy, the torrential, the powerful. Come on. Hallelujah. The times of refreshing. Oh, we need it one more time. Where it separates everything. Yes, I'm thankful that we moved into the age where we are, where there's, there's so much more activity. Just like Brother Jeff was talking about Wednesday. Amen. Where, where you know, there, it's, 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 it's not unusual to see people raising their hands, clapping their hands, and worshiping, you know, from the external. A liveliness. We see it everywhere, all over the world. But something's got to happen one more time, which got to divide. It's got to bring a separation for that true church to rise up. It's not in our entertainments. It's not in how many good lights we can have that does whatever cool stuff. It's not in all of our cool things. Friend, it was and it still is by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by might. It is not by power. But it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. If people don't start coming through these doors because something's drawing them in the Holy Ghost, 
to a place where they're transformed by that power. Hallelujah. If they're attracted to the sound systems or the lightings or the entertainment, they're coming for the wrong reasons. They've got to come because that's the person the Bible said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they be filled. I'm going to bring them to that place. I'm going to get them to the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. If they're really hungry and if they're really thirsty, God's going to bring them to the places they need to be going to. And we need to pray. Oh, we've got to rise up. Come on. Hallelujah. We're not the church trying to run from holiness. We're not the church trying to figure out a way to get away from all the old things. No, friend, we're the church that's hungry for God. We're the people that's willing to sacrifice and whatever cost it's going to cost. But we want to be the church, the bride. Oh, my. Oh, my. Acts 3 and 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The expectation that is prophesied in the book of Job Job 29 and 23. And they waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. Keep praying. We've not arrived. We've not arrived. Keep praying. And their mouth will open. That's the absorption. It's the receiving of the drinking of the spiritual, torrential, powerful, latter rain. Joel chapter 2 verse 23 be glad ye children of Zion you children of Zion rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain together as in that one month. My, 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 my. He hath given you the former rain moderately. But then he speaks of something they understood where there's two seasons of rain but yet he's telling us it will come together and come down for one season, for a powerful work in one month. The former rain and the latter rain will join together and produce a speedy harvest. Are you ready? Are we ready? Hallelujah. It's referring to that first rain in the land of Palestine that came in the fall of the year when they plant their crops. And it causes the grain to spring up. And then he's talking about the latter. And it was illustrated by that second rain that comes in the springtime when the harvest takes place. He's using the two seasons of rain to illustrate an illustration of what I'm preaching right now. Just before he comes for his church, he is going to give that outpouring. Mm. Friend, 
please don't look at me and think, well, he's just trying. I am not. I'm just telling you. I am a man of God that is stirred. I am stirred and I am moved. God is telling us 2022. God is telling us, rise up with faith. Speak faith. Expect. Come on. You've got to get activated. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 I keep saying it, and I don't know why God told me to say it because it scared me. I don't know why it scared me, but He said, You just start speaking that I'm going to pay off the debt of that church that won me a $900,000 debt. $1.9 million in the year of 2022. When God told me that, it scared me. I almost said, no, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to look like a fool. But I come in here in the Holy Ghost and I say, okay, God, I'll do it. I'm going to speak it and I'm going to say it. Because God is activating something where it's a quick movement. It's a swift movement. And my faith is going to be in it. I said my faith. I'm not going to lock in it. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to quench the spirit of what God is doing. My God, I'm going to say it. And I'm going to do it. Because it's something greater than me that is saved. It. Something greater than me that is doing it. Something greater than me that is preaching. Something greater than me that is saying, here's a goal. Achieve it. Open up your mouth wide. Open up your mouth wide to receive. Pray for the rain. That true spiritual ladder rain that is coming in immeasurable quantities. Hallelujah. Have I not spoken to you? Have I not said it repetitively over and over and over again? The hand of God is upon you, going before you, be in your rear guard, covering you, leading you, preparing you. I have talked. I have spoken. I have moved upon you as my spirit is awaking and stirring and preparing you to be what I have purposed you to be before this world ever begun. I, the Lord your God, I am moving upon my people I am awakening my people that have slumbered and slept and you shall arise one more time. You shall arise one more time with power, with authority and use it. I have given it to you. Use it. Thus saith the Lord.
have been tested and you have been tried. You have been put through the fire. You have faced the mountain that seemed unmovable for you, but you are still in place. You have passed your test. Now it's time for the reward. Thus saith the Lord. Come on, raise your hand. Open up, open up, open up, open up. That's it, come on. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. All doubt, all disbelief. Just put it aside. Put it out of your mind. Come on. The mouth of two or three witnesses, let it be established. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Job 29 and 23, I'm reading this again. And they waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. Expect it. Open your mouth. If y'all would give me that last picture that I gave y'all, amen, I just want us to say, hallelujah. That, that I send a bright cloud with activity. That picture, I've, I've actually zoomed in. David Woods can I. He'll tell you, those that seen he was the only one that seen it. When I first sent it to him, I sent him the one where you can tell it's actually nighttime. And, you, and this cloud and the, the activity going on in it, you can see everything else is dark. But then I said, I want to zoom in and just, just give them a close-up on that. But listen to me. This is what God's trying to tell us. <laughs> that thing is, it is going to stand out like a beacon. It's going to stand out like a bright light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and they glorify the Father which is in heaven. We got to get it out from under the bushel. We got to come on. Hallelujah. It's no more us just, well, we just, this is how the traditional church is. Friend, we got to get out of that. It's time for us to have faith for God to do the new thing. Hallelujah. He said in the wilderness, that cracked dry ground, I'm going to send water into it. Hallelujah. There's going to be a new thing done. Hallelujah. I'm not wanting Pentecost as always. I've been all the Pentecost all my life. I'm not seeking after that. No friend, there's something calling us above it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Awakening with us things that I have seen, things that I know. Hallelujah. But yet he said, greater than that I will do. Come on, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. It, it, is, it is almost like I can hear voices of the forefathers of old uh, as they preaching uh, with that red heart, uh, preaching uh, with the word of the living God, uh, awakening and activating. Uh, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Uh, the gifts of the Spirit, they are rumbling. There's a lightning. Uh, they're stirring. Uh, the miracles, uh, the signs uh, and the wonders, uh, the healings uh, and the deliverance is biblical proportions. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Is your spirit activating? Do you feel it in the Holy Ghost? Can you feel it rising inside of you? Pray for the rain. God, sin the rain in the latter time. Awaken the sleeping giant. 
I know it's here. I know it's here. Awaken, 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 awaken. May the true church, the true church become activated. Red hot, spewing force and power, the Spirit. I'm telling you, I don't know how to preach. I don't know how. All I know is I'm trying to get across what I feel. I'm trying my best to get across what I feel. What I feel God's been doing in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not a place of bragging. This is, this is what scares me to death about it all. It's not a place where we say, look at us. It's not about any of that. This is a place where we humble ourselves before God. And God will lift us up. Joy. We humble ourselves before God. We're unworthy. 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 We humble ourselves before God. Because no flesh, no flesh shall glory in His presence. Nobody, nobody, nobody. When he trusts us with the true presence and power of God to flow out of us and through us. Friend, we can't get no glory. No flesh shall glory. No flesh shall glory in my presence. I pray God, please, God, I want to be what I want you to I want to be that. I want to be that church. I want to be that church. I don't want to be that church. God, help me. My spirit right, my heart right, the way I am, how I think, how I function, how I operate. Because God said, I can't do it if you're going to glory in it. I'm not seeking glory. I'm seeking deliverance. Deliverance. Deliverance from the flesh. Deliverance from the carnal ways. Deliverance from the things that stop the activation of the spiritual. Oh, God. The book of Genesis in the time of Noah. You read in the Word of God about the unprecedented, exceeding it went beyond the, expe- the expectation of men and women on the earth. Nobody believed there could come a rain. Noah, you're crazy. Pastor, you're crazy. lost your mind nobody believed but Noah knew what God said there's coming a rain you better seal your boat because God's going to come close the door 
and that bone's got to flow. And what I send is what's going to cause that boat to rise. And the Bible says fountains of the great deep were broken. And the windows of heaven friend something was coming from the geysers when something comes from the geysers of the deep I'm going to tell you friend that's hot water oh my friend you better look out now now you're talking about water come from up there I'm talking about you don't want under your feet something like that because you, I'm telling you right now it will fry you You don't believe me? You go out there and find them geysers. Just go out there and find one of those geysers. I'm going to tell you right now, they don't want you looking over that thing, looking down in the hole. God said that the great deeps burst open. And the windows of heaven. And there came a torrential a supernatural wonder that happened from above and from below as God opened the floodgates and busted the fountains of the great deep. It wasn't like one of our floods. Buddy, this whole earth filled up with water quickly speedily I'm not talking about a town I'm not talking about uh, I'm, I'm not talking about a state I'm not talking about the United States I'm talking about the world and that ark began to rise as that gusher from on high lifted Noah's ark and his family. Genesis 7 and 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. These words is what I'm reaching to. This exceeding thing, Brother Joel, I've been in it and I keep staying in it. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all above all that you can ask or that you can think now I know right there I got your doubt again but I'm going to keep preaching like a crazy man I said I'm going to keep preaching like a crazy man and you're going to say you're crazy you're crazy you're crazy but God said it God said it above all that I can ask above all that I can think and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail. And the mountains were covered. The mountains. The mountains. The mountains. Whatever. How many thousands of feet that is 29,000 whatever it might be Mount Everest and all these different heights the mountains were covered how high 20 feet more whatever the highest point you can find 20 feet above that above all God's church brother Randy I feel like a crazy man this morning. I feel like I'm losing my mind. That's what my flesh says. But something on side of me saying, keep on, 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 keep on. Hallelujah. Come on, church. That's what God's called the church. Above all. That's where God's called the church, brother. Above all. Above all. Above every devil. Above every devil. 
demon, above every mountain, above every spirit, above everything you battle, above everything you fight. God has called the church. He said, I'm going to one more time. It's not going to be the literal. It's going to be the spiritual. One more time. I'm going to send the rain. One more time. It's going to activate. One more time. And whatever activates, it's going to rise. It's going to rise the church. It's going to rise those that are sealed by the Holy Ghost. They are sealed by the Holy Ghost. They are sealed. They are sealed by the Holy Ghost. It's going to rise them one more time above all. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.